cast your eyes over to the truth booth for inside hidden mystery guest. I didn't realise that uh, the cast of Wicked were coming to join us. Uh, right, one of you three owes them a ruddy apology. First clue, this person is a teacher and has been lied to by both parents and pupils. Second clue, uh, they had the education of the children as their top priority, but was let down by others. And clue number three, they somehow implied to us that Richard Ayawadi owed them an apology. <laughs> <laughs> and when pushed for a response to the wrongdoing performed against them by one of our panel, they had this to say, of course, we're not going to use their real voice, OK? We're going to choose a very enthusiastic, yet totally available actor. <laughs> it's Ian McShane. Here we go. It was on this day that I learned that people lie. People break your trust. No matter what a good person you try to be, people will take advantage. Oh, very strong perf there. <laughs> now, Ed. Hello. Could this be somebody that you need to apologise to, do you think? I fear it might be my uh, sixth form tutor. Mm -hmm. He was a very good teacher, um, and I was a bit of a tear away for the majority of my time at school. Uh, but I was quite well behaved in the last year, and a lot of it was down to this man. And he made me promise that I wouldn't do anything silly on the last day. Right. He was like, don't yeah. throw it all away on the last day. You've done so well. Yeah. And then me and my friend George um, set about creating two bagfuls of pornographic confetti. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with the concept of uh, porn confetti... Oh, dear. Uh, we went and sourced two porn magazines. I realised sourced is completely the wrong word in this context. <laughs> <laughs> we went and bought two porn magazines. Please don't tell me you also sourced them. <laughs> we did. We you didn't source them source. first, though, we, before we, you bought them. We didn't that's probably why you had to buy them. You've sourced these, <laughs> now you've got to buy them. <laughs> this was also the day I was banned from the corner shop. <laughs> um, but we Let's bring it back, Ed. Let's bring it right back. Bought some porn magazines. Yep. Hardcore. Razzle or some such. Yeah, bad stuff happening in them. What you then do <laughs> is you tear out all of the, the key business bits that are happening. The eyes. <laughs> That's very nice, Mel, that for you the most important bit is the eyes. If, in fact, I think it would be more terrifying if we just tore out all the eyes in a porn <laughs> magazine. <Exactly. laughs> this is the only way I can enjoy porn if they don't have any eyes. <laughs> You tear out all the, all the genitalia, all the business bits, straight up in morning break to the top window of the school that overlooked a sort of quad, uh, and then very victoriously threw out all this, uh, all this pornographic confetti. Now, the problem being, this, the, the worst problem being, it then sort of caught a gust and really spread all over the quad, <laughs> just in time for uh, the younger boys had just got out of an exam, oh. and they came into the quad. <laughs> Uh, and they were probably not of age, and they were basically hit by sort of penile rain. <laughs> As I turned to make my escape, we planned our escape route ab absolutely perfectly, and right at the end of the corridor was stood <gasps> my sick form tutor, oh. who sort of just slowly shook his head at me, and I was asked to leave school for the rest of the day. Oh. And you still get <laughs> rusticated. That was the name of the magazine. <laughs> So, let's reveal who our mystery guest is. Mystery guest, please reveal your true self. Oh, my God! Oh. That's right, Ed. It's your old year tutor, Graham Salt. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Hello, sir! <laughs> <laughs> now, we've heard... Mr. Ed's story, Graham. Can I call you Graham or Mr. Yes. Salt? Yes. Graham's good. Graham's good. <laughs> he still Mr. Salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, please tell us your side of the story. The, the school had had this sort of history of last day pranks, okay. and the school wanted to shut this down. You know, okay. let's end this tradition. Yeah. Uh, and so I was tasked to give the preemptive strike on Ed because he was a possible suspect. Yeah. As uh, obviously we've. We've heard tonight, it had no effect whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's never too late to say sorry, is it? Didn't I shave your head once as well? Yes, he did. <laughs> and... How? What? 
Oh, yeah, so I've got a couple of apologies to make, actually. <laughs> I had to shave Mr. Salt's head for charity, but I think you just wanted us grade two or something, and we were doing it in front of the whole school, and I took <laughs> complete... <laughs> <laughs> took the clipper guard off completely and just went... <laughs> down the middle of it. This is true. Uh, he, he enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and to say the middle of it as if it's just meat. <laughs> Salty, can I just say, can I call you Salty? Yeah. <laughs> can we call you big old salt dog? <laughs> <laughs> salty, for all the pain that Ed has caused you over the years, and it is indeed a lot of pain, uh, the time has come to enact your revenge on Edward Gamble, OK? Dun, Year Group dun. 23. We've decided that the best punishment is for you, Ed, to take that stack of Razzle magazines next to you... <laughs> There's a box of tiny little paper pairs of pants <laughs> and some prick stick. And oh, yeah. to make everyone in this magazine jolly well decent again. Okay? <laughs> Isn't that right, Salty? It's absolutely right. You stick the pants onto every. <laughs> I thought you'd just made that cover and then it was going to be I, like just no, a normal I, magazine in the no. middle. No, it's proper porn. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know that this is actually working as a punishment. Richard, I know, I'm uh, a Richard, bit worried. have a look Ed. at this. Richard, Ed. Richard. You put that holster down, <laughs> mister. I don't want any part of this like Salty Dog over there, <laughs> who is very grateful of having that hat in front of there. <laughs> he knew what was going to happen. He said, lads, I've got to cover this. What's the biggest hat you've got? <laughs> Mr Salt, everybody. Thank you. Sorry.